The sun is the center of a group of astronomical bodies called planets. Including the Earth, there are nine planets moving in orbits around the sun. All of the planets except two have one to 12 moons. There are also more than 1,500 tiny planets called asteroids in the solar system, as well as a large number of comets. Through the telescopes of Lowell and other observatories, we will see the principal members of this solar system. Lowell Observatory is located on Mars Hill near Flagstaff, Arizona. In the dome that you see here is Dr. Lowell's 24-inch lens-type telescope used in his studies of Mars. Lens-type telescopes are mounted in closed tubes. We'll use this telescope uh, later in the picture to watch changes in the markings on the surface of Mars through the planet's spring and summer and into its autumn season. The Lawrence Lowell Telescope is housed in this smaller dome. It was built particularly for searching for very faint objects. In 1930, using this telescope, Clyde Tambaugh made the photographs which led to the discovery of Pluto, the ninth and outpost planet of the solar system. In 1610, Galileo observed Venus in different positions in its orbit and confirmed the Copernican theory that the planets move around the sun. Dr. Earl Schleifer made this series of photographs of Venus showing the planet's phases just as Galileo saw them. That Mars is turning on its axis is seen by photographs made through the 40-inch Yerkes telescope during four and a half hours. Seasonal changes on Mars from the beginning of spring through the summer and into the autumn season were photographed by Dr. Earl Schleifer at Lowell. The great white area at the top of the disk is the south polar cap. As this decreases in size, you will notice a dark area along the equator, which is the warmest region of Mars. During the Martian spring and summer, this marking is slightly greenish in hue. In the autumn, it turns brownish in color and then fades. It appears to be somewhat similar to the temperate zone on the Earth where large areas are green in spring and summer. In the autumn, the leaves turn brown and drop, leaving the branches bare so that they're not visible from a great distance. Some astronomers think that the dark markings on Mars may be low-growing vegetation, like moss or lichens. Between Mars and Jupiter, more than 1,500 tiny planets called asteroids have been discovered by their motion against the background of distant stars. Watching Jupiter through the 24-inch lens uh, telescope at Lowell, we note that the planet is turning on its axis. Note the elongated dark area in the upper right, and you will see this moving across the disk. Jupiter is 11 times the diameter of the Earth, and it turns on its axis in 9 hours and 55 minutes. Now through the 200-inch telescope of Palomar, notice in the upper right a light area above one of the dark belts. This is gradually carried across the face of the planet as it whirls on its axis. This rapid rotation draws the atmospheric envelope into constantly changing bands. Here is one of the moons and its shadow. By the use of a filter, the great red spot is brought out, and with a slightly different filter, we see some changes in its appearance. The great red spot was discovered in 1878. Jupiter has 12 moons. The four major moons were the first astronomical objects ever discovered by means of the telescope. Galileo discovered them with his two-inch instrument. They're constantly changing their arrangement because they move around the planet in different orbits and in different periods of time. 
Sometimes they disappear behind the planet in eclipse, and at other times they may be seen in transit as the moon's shadow moves across the disk. At times all four moons may be seen on one side of the planet. Saturn is the spectacular planet of the solar system because of its rings. These are not solid or liquid, but are clouds of meteoric material. Saturn moves around the sun in 29 and a half years. The Earth moves around in one year, and so we pass Saturn, so to speak, every year in 13 days. The poles of Saturn always point in one direction, and from year to year the appearance of the rings changes. Twice in each 29 and a half years, the rings are broadly spread, and twice they are turned edgewise. Early in the year 1610, Galileo observed Saturn with his two-inch telescope. He made a notation that he observed the planet as triple or three, seeing it just as you see it here. A short time later, the side objects disappeared when the rings were edgewise to the Earth, he made a record of what he observed, but he was so mystified that he failed to announce it, hence he is not credited with the discovery of the rings. Saturn moves forward in its orbits. You see the rings begin to appear again. They will widen for a few years. They recently passed their edgewise position and are now widening. After they reach their maximum, and they will narrow down again to the edgewise position. In 1933, astronomers discovered a great white spot in the equatorial region of Saturn, under the rings. It was a very difficult photographic object, but Earl Slifer at Lowell Observatory made these photographs of it to show just how it appeared in the telescope. It proved to be a region of methane and ammonia gases. Now some close-ups of Saturn. The outer ring is 171,000 miles in diameter with Cassini's division between the outer and the middle rings. Here we see Saturn with the 100-inch telescope. The crepe ring is seen as a shadow across the planet's equator. Saturn is a very large planet and turns rapidly on its axis, its atmospheric envelope being drawn into bands, but they're not so numerous as the bands of Jupiter. Bands are very plainly seen in this photograph made with the 200-inch telescope. The great white spot, which we see here, was 22,000 miles in length and 7,000 miles across. It doubtless represented an enormous disturbance on the surface of the planet far below. Uranus has five moons. We here show the four major moons which move around the planet in elliptical orbits very close to the plane of the planet's equator. The fifth moon is very small and can only be seen in the largest telescopes. Neptune has two moons, but one of them is so small that it can only be seen in very large telescopes. Here we see Neptune and its major moon. During the period from January 23rd to January 29th, 1930, Clyde Tambaugh photographed a suspected region of the sky with the Lawrence Lowell Telescope. The motion of this object during the six days led to the discovery of the planet Pluto. Three observations were recorded and an orbit computed. It was found to be the long-sought planet beyond the orbit of Neptune that Dr. Lowell and others had predicted. It was given the name Pluto because the first two letters are Dr. Percival Lowell's initials. The discovery was announced on March 13th, his birthday. When comets are first seen in the telescope, they appear as tiny bits of haze. As the comet approaches the sun, the radiation from the sun appears to set up intensive activity in the head of the comet, and atomic material is thrown forward. This material is driven outward by the sun's pressure of radiation, so that the tail 
of the comet always points generally away from the sun. In May 1910, Halley's Comet was a very conspicuous object extending for millions of miles across the sky. After passing perihelion, the point nearest to the sun, it moved out beyond the orbit of Neptune to return in about 75 years or about the year 1985. Comets in sweeping through space sometimes strike regions of meteoric material. Notice now how Brooks Comet in 24 hours swept one of these great meteoric clouds. 